Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me the school had warnings way earlier in the morning and they still did nothing? What? P-A-S-C-A-L. What's up, guys? As you guys already know, we have been keeping a very, very close watch on everything that's been transpiring around this Appalachian High School tragedy. We already know that we have Colt Gray, all right? 14-year-old Colt, Colt Gray. He has been detained. He's been arrested. He is looking at life in prison with or without the possibility of, par of parole. And it has been absolutely crazy the amount of stuff that's been coming out as of late. Everything revolving around this timeline, to be completely real. We're all wanting to understand the timeline before everything went down. From what we understand, the timeline before the actual tragedy, he left uh, Algebra 1, went, allegedly went to go use the restroom. He came back around 1020 to open fire on a whole bunch of kids and a whole bunch of staff of this school. There was a text message that we understand that was sent to his mother that sparked her to actually call the school and give the school a heads up, basically saying, hey, my kid might be doing something really, really bad. You might want to go check on him. He might be doing something bad here. And of course, they went out. They interrogated the wrong guy, the wrong Colt Gray. Actually, that's Colton Gray, not Colt Gray. But they interrogated the wrong kid who happened to be in the same classroom as Colt, okay, and then, of course, this whole tragedy went down. We also understand that the phone call that was made to the school was made a whole 30 minutes before this whole tragedy went down. But now there is even more of a bombshell that was dropped by his mama, which, by the way, I'm wondering, you know, th there's been a lot of conversation about her catching charges and all that. Um, I, I, I'm interested to hear if she's caught one or not, but she's out. Okay. She's free. She's, she's webcamming from her home. Okay. In this bombshell interview where she shows that Georgia school, that her school, the, her son's school, Appalachian high school got an even earlier warning, an earlier warning than her own phone call that she made to the school. I'll explain. But this is wild. Let's take a look at this, guys. The mother of Georgia school tragedy suspect, Colt Gray, her name is Marcy Gray, claimed that the teachers had noticed her son was making references to violence at the school, even before she warned the administrators about this. Wow, that's insane. So she said, the counselor said, I wanted to let you know that earlier this morning, one of Colt's teachers sent me an email saying Colt had been making references to doing something bad, okay, to tragedies that happen at the school. This is what Marcy Gray told ABC News, okay, in a video interview from her home. So she ain't locked up. Look at her. She out here, okay? She's doing just fine as far as I'm concerned, all right? But she's finally speaking out in a way, all right? So she says, but my gut feeling, but my gut feelings, the text message, and now this email, you, you need to, like, run, run to the classroom. That's what she said, which is very, very interesting, right? This is so strange, right? OK, so this is a 30 second clip. Of course, we're going to look at that as well. But of course, they said, you know, authorities said Colt Gray, we already know, opened fire about 30 minutes after the mother's warnings. So, again, if this is actually true and we're going to take a look at this video, too, because this is absolutely crazy. If this is true. Why did it take the school this long to do anything? If they knew some inkling of him being doing something really unbelievably bad, if he was foreshadowing, giving any kind of hints, talking about other tragedies that happen at schools, they were, they were inspired enough to call the mother, to call some sort of parental unit to let them know, hey, your son's talking crazy out here. He's saying some really bad things, and we're concerned about this. Wouldn't, why wouldn't they have done something when she called back, okay, to say, hey, my son's about to do something bad, I have a feeling. Do, run to the classroom. Why didn't they do anything about it? It seems odd, don't you think?
it seems a little bit odd. Again, this is not only just on law enforcement from 16 months ago. This is not only just on the parents because it's all it all happens at home too. Okay, it all starts at home. All right, but it's also the school we're now starting to understand. But the question is, is she telling the truth or is she trying to pass blame? Is she trying to deflect and so that she doesn't look like such a bad person? So the parents don't look like such a bad person, bad people, right? I, I'm curious. I'm very curious about this. But like I said, let's take a look at this. I'm going to jump in and out of this, okay? It's a very short clip. Let's rock and roll. Well, I wanted to let you know that earlier this morning, one of Colt's teachers had sent me an email that said Colt had been making references to school shootings. So, again, they knew about this <clears throat> way before 950 when Mama Gray called the school and said, please check on my son because something's up. Extreme danger could be happening very, very soon. This is crazy, y'all. I mean, my gut feelings, the text messages, and now this email, y'all need to go, like, run to the classroom. Crazy, right? So she's literally sitting there saying, hey, uh, I got a bunch of emails, or I got some emails from one of the one of the teachers saying that they're very concerned about him because he was saying some things, you know, talking out the side of his neck, talking crazy, talking about other school tragedies. This could be a warning of something to come. She gets those emails. Then she says on top of that, the text, message, text messages that she received from him, one of them said, I'm sorry, mama. I'm sorry, mother, right? Clearly, that triggered her enough to be like, oh, no, I need to call. I need to call the school right now and let them know what's going on. The question, uh, the other question I have for this as well is, <clears throat> what's up with the counselor here? What's up with the counselor? If the counselor knew about these things, if they were sending, if the teacher was sending an email to the counselor and the administration, and then that was sent out to the mother, why wasn't the counselor taking this thing as a red alert? Why wasn't this counselor looking at this and handling this in more of a high alert situation? Like I said a million times before, guys. This is a zero tolerance type of situation. This is not a situation where you just sit back and go, oh, yeah, you know, we'll just hand it over to the parents and the parents will figure it out. No, you got many other kids and many other lives under the roof of that school that need to be taken care of and need to be safe and saved by you just this lackadaisical approach to handling this situation is beyond me, y'all. It's absolutely beyond me. But here's the thing. We're just hearing this from Marcy Gray. We do not know if this is true or not. So we have to make sure, hopefully law enforcement is really doing their due diligence, deep diving into this thing and finding out if this is true or not. But absolutely, if this is true, this is insane. And I can't believe that the school could be dropping even a bigger ball than what we've already have th than what we've already learned. This is insane, guys. Anyway, guys, comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know where you stand on this. This is crazy, okay? Hit that like button down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that follow button if you're watching on the other platforms. It'd be great to have you a part of the Pascal Show family. Anyway, it's time to get going. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. We'll talk soon. This is the Pascal Show. Bye. P-A-S-C-A-L. You are now rocking with that dude, Pascal. We be going wild.